Today, we are looking at the very latest general purpose humanoid robots, the threat of artificial intelligence as announced by the creator of ChatGPT, new products from OpenAI, a robotic octopus that unfolds in the human brain, and all sorts of other weird and wonderful tech news, all in one video. Now, you've probably already heard about it, but we simply have to cover this story here. Elon Musk has shown us an updated version of his robot Optimus, which in the future is set to become the main product of Tesla. In the video, a group of five robots walk through the workshop where the long-awaited first Cybertruck pickups are also being prepared for assembly. The updated Optimus has acquired the following capabilities. Walking autonomously and keeping balance, controlling engine torque, which is demonstrated by first hitting the robot arm firmly on a hard surface and then gently touching a chicken egg without damaging the shell scanning the surrounding space and memorizing it, forming a digital map of the area from a cloud of dots, and learning through demonstration. That is, the robot learns in a simulation on a data set created by recording human actions. A human shows how to grab and move objects, and the robot physically repeats these actions. And developers also teach the robot to move its arms along complex trajectories and to handle soft or fragile objects with complex shapes. It has to be said that within the space of about a year and eight months, Optimus has gone from a dancing person in tights to a real robot capable of a range of independent actions. And yet, the hardest part is yet to come. You'll recall that last autumn, Tesla announced a plan that calls for the development and launch of many new products over the next two years. While it's not yet certain that Optimus humanoid robots will hit the assembly line in Austin next year, a new video shows the company's progress in that direction. And, as always, the news about the Tesla bot spurred other companies to show off their robots. For example, Sanctuary unveiled its general-purpose humanoid robot, Phoenix. We've already shown this company's robots many times. They deftly cope with a variety of tasks, albeit under full human control. The Phoenix should show the company's progress towards a truly useful robot. The Phoenix's arms have an increased number of 20 degrees of freedom, and its hands use patented haptic technology that mimics human touch for subtle manipulation. The press release claims that the control system called Carbon allows Phoenix to think and act to perform tasks like a human. I have to say, this appears to be something of an exaggeration. It might be what the company is aiming for, but as of today, Phoenix can't walk or do anything on its own. Sanctuary's plan is to start with telepresence and use it as the basis for moving toward general purpose autonomy. The first step is for the robot to perceive people and record their movements while they are doing something useful. The data collected in this way is used to develop efficient teleoperated robots, but as it accumulates, frequently repetitive tasks will be automated. Then the company will combine the already automated task into longer sequences, gradually moving towards full autonomy. At least that's the plan. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman spoke at a US congressional hearing on AI development. And there he made some interesting statements. For example, he said that the authorities must control artificial intelligence, not in terms of its development, but in terms of its application. This way, he says, the benefits that AI technology can provide will outweigh the potential risks. Altman also proposed the creation of a global agency that would license the most powerful artificial intelligence systems and have the power to select that license and enforce security standards. When asked about his own worst fears about AI, Altman said that the industry could do significant harm to the world if its development goes in the wrong direction from the start. He avoided giving specific examples. He did suggest that the new regulator, when it emerges, should block AI models that can self-reproduce and self-propagate in the wild. Now, such systems, by the way, don't exist. But so far, OpenAI has pleased users with its novelties, so the company has released a ChatGPT application. For now, this is available only on iOS, but will soon be available on Android too. The free application synchronizes the history of conversations and includes a voice control function based on the speech recognition model OpenAI Whisper. The release of the app was a logical next step after ChatGPT attracted 100 million users in the first two months of open access. Although these numbers haven't been confirmed, they may very well be real, or even underestimated, given that ChatGPT has found a very wide application from writing essays and diplomas 
to creating bots in Telegram and new applications for business. So far, the app is only available in the USA and only on iPhones from eight and up, but soon it will probably go worldwide. Like the web version, the mobile app is free with GPT 3.5 and paid for those who want to use GPT 4. OpenAI also introduced the generative open source SHAP E model. This artificial intelligence creates a 3D model of objects from a flat image or text description. A preliminary version of the model was released in December and was called Point E. It could create uncomplicated 3D models in the form of point clouds. SHAP E is much, much faster and is able to build its models as mathematical formulae, which can be represented either as textured meshes or as neural radiation fields. So far, the technology is quite primitive, but it has a lot of potential. If you, for example, want to create your own world in VR or print something on a 3D printer, all you have to do is describe to the AI what you want to get and it will create 3D models of the objects for you. You can do the same thing to get a model of a part, a building or a sculpture. Essentially, SHAP E is artificial intelligence that responds to natural speech, similar to ChatGPT, only with 3D design features. SpaceX is actively preparing for the next Starship flight. The company is restoring the launch pad and has already put the 25th prototype Starship on it. The 26th is also already complete, just in case the 25th gets damaged in testing. We also know that SpaceX has filed a permit with the Federal Communications Commission to launch Starship anytime between June the 15th and December the 15th. According to the documents, the mission will include a Starship launch in conjunction with a Super Heavy booster. The launch will take place in Boca Chica, Texas. The Super Heavy booster must travel part of the way back to the launch pad after the separation of the spacecraft and fall into the Gulf of Mexico some 495 seconds after liftoff. Starship's upper stage will enter orbit and land in the Pacific Ocean, northwest of the Hawaiian island of Kauai, about 90 minutes after launch. But before that can happen, the company will have to get approval from the FAA, which has not even finished its damage assessment of the first launch failure. Blue Origin still managed to get a contract from NASA for a landing module for the lunar mission. You'll recall that Elon Musk SpaceX won the bid organized by NASA. However, Blue Origin didn't accept defeat and through the courts demanded a contract as a sort of backup company if suddenly SpaceX isn't able to cope with the task or fails to deliver on time. Now, this practice is pretty standard for NASA, but in this particular case, the agency originally was going to limit itself to one contractor. Bezos apparently expects that Musk, who, whether it's with Twitter or AI or anything else, is always trying to aim higher and higher, will not be able to focus on the creation of the lunar landing module. In any case, so far nothing is really known about its development. Internal Amazon documents have been leaked online, revealing a major upgrade the company is preparing for its Astro home robot. Now, after a rather pompous presentation, it has to be said, the robot hasn't really attracted much interest from anybody. So now, Jeff Bezos' company, the income from which, incidentally, he financed his Blue Origin with, has decided to make the robot much smarter and more useful. And in a rather original way, it has to be said. Thanks to a new generative artificial intelligence technology called Burnham, Amazon will teach the robot to understand and remember what it sees at home. And then it will discuss it. In our view, this innovation is somewhat ambiguous. On the one hand, the robot, in certain situations, will understand much better what you're talking about and will be able to respond. It will also be able, for example, to remember where you put your keys or whether or not you left on a tap. On the other hand, are you really sure you want the robot to memorize and discuss everything it sees in your house with anybody and everybody? Scientists from Switzerland have created a soft robot that can be placed inside your brain where it deploys its tentacles like an octopus. According to the researchers, the new gadget could lead to minimally invasive ways of studying the brain and implanting brain-computer interfaces. In particular, such a robot will be able to help it analyze the brain after an injury or detect and extinguish seizures by acting on nerve cells. And of course, the device can record brain signals in a qualitative way. The advantages of a soft robot over Elon Musk's chip is that it can unfold in the brain like a ship in a bottle. It can enter the brain through a tiny hole, pass through a millimeter slot between the brain and the skull in order to deploy its tentacles in the right place. To create the device, 
scientists spot a flexible gold electrodes less than 400 micrometers thick onto a soft medical grade silicon rubber. The array has six spiral arms that maximize its surface area and therefore the number of electrodes in contact with the brain. Intrinsic, one of Alphabet's robotic subsidiaries, announced its first product. It is Intrinsic Flow State, an intuitive web-based environment for creating robotic applications from concept to deployment. The goal of the project is to create a platform where anyone interested, i.e. both experts and non-specialists, can implement an industrial robot application which they themselves thought up. The idea is then that this can be deployed afterwards. And before practice, everything can be tested in theory in the same environment to make sure that the application is correct, safe and workable. In actual fact, this is a very important and necessary thing. Considering how expensive a robot itself is, as well as its installation, being able to develop and implement new applications for it yourself will greatly increase the appeal of robots to customers. Engineers from the Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology have taught a robot dog to walk on any surface by touch. The system for controlling the robot's movements without visual sensors is called DreamWork. It consists of a context-aware program that analyzes information about the environment and a network of procedures that calculate control commands. In other words, the robot collects information about its current body position by using an inertial sensor and measuring angles in its joints. It then assumes what environment it's in and selects a suitable movement pattern from those already calculated for it on the computer. Learning to move takes about an hour. Judging by the video, the robot reacts quickly and adapts to new types of surfaces. American fast food restaurant chain Wendy's is about to launch a robotic food delivery system through underground tunnels. Pipe Dream will build the system, but if you imagine something massive, this isn't it. The whole technological marvel will obviously fit into the parking lot outside the restaurant. A customer will stop next to one of the so-called instant pickup portals. They'll place an order, and according to the press release, the robot will deliver the food before it has time to get cold. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't miss new releases from the world of tech.